All right, guys, so here I am with Cave Story. So first of all, you'll notice that whenever Quote looks in a direction, the camera faces away from it. And if we look up, then the camera will move upward at a kind of diagonal angle away from Quote, like so. If we jump and look down, then it goes downwards, and it pops back up when we hit the ground. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna have to do is make the behavior of the camera target. So we'll just create an empty underneath the player, call it camera target. So if we look at this, here's what it is. And how we want this to act is that we want it to be four units away from the player based on the direction. So if the player is looking left, it's four units away uh, to the left side. If they're looking right, it's four units to the right. And if the player is looking up, then it's going to go four units up. And if they're looking down, then it's going to go four units down. So that's the first order of business. So under camera, let's create C sharp script called camera target behavior. So we're going to actually use a singleton pattern to get all our data from the player. So let's go back to the player class. And what we want to do is we want to create, let's actually do it underneath these. We want to create a public static player called instance and our private void awake. We want to declare the instance as this. And um, how singletons work is you use them whenever you have one class or one instance of a class. So you just define a static instance of that and then you can call it from any other piece of code in your entire program uh, later in the scene. I'll link to a video that explains singletons a little bit better in the description. Um, anyway, we also want some public functions. So we're gonna put our public functions um, right here and say publics and then privates. So the first public function we're gonna want is called public bool facing right or is facing right and it's just going to return facing right and another public direction get direction it's going to return direction great so now if we go into our camera target behavior we're going to have a public float distance which we're going to default out to four and a private player player so then in void start you're going to want player to equal player dot instance make sure that this is in start because we want this to call after the awake function from here because that way we know that instance is defined when we're asking for it then in void update we're going to say so we're gonna want a vector three for which direction we want it to be facing. So we'll say vector three um, local pause equals new vector three. So let's see, we're gonna have the X, the Y and the Z. So the first thing we want is the X and we want the X to be defined by which direction the player is facing. So we're just gonna say um, player dot is facing right negative one or one negative one so this is just another ternary operator and it's just that if the player is facing right then we want him to then we want it to be one to the right and if it's not then we want it to be one to the left or negative one and the y is going to be based on direction so how we do this is we're going to call that function from general again, where if we go here, the, this one direction to vector. So we're just going to say general dot direction to vector player dot get direction dot y. And then for Z, we just want it to be negative 10 so that the camera, if we go back to unity and we go out of 2D, we want the camera 
to always be 10 units behind so that because if the camera moves too far forward then you can see that happens let's see what happened here oh, um uh oh we spelled direction wrong my bad okay so if we take the camera target and we attach the camera target script to it and the distance is four then let's um let's give it just a little sprite just so we can see where it is okay yeah i just picked a random sprite here just so we can see where it is and now if we play then we'll see that it's huh uh oh oh we never actually um you know we never actually set the position based on this okay my bad so um yeah what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna say transform dot local position equals local pause times distance okay so now if we play okay um i actually made a mistake we're gonna want to set this to zero instead of negative 10 we want to save the negative 10 for the camera i forgot that we're actually working with the target not the camera so now if we do that then we'll see that it's working great all right sweet so our camera target is working as intended. Now we actually have to make the camera work accordingly to it. So we're gonna make a new C sharp script called camera behavior. Okay, so camera behavior we're going to attach to our main camera. I should just quickly explain the difference between the main camera and the pixel perfect camera. So the main camera is going to be our actual camera that's going to move around and, you know, actually like take the photography while the pixel perfect camera is just kind of a dummy camera that takes the uh, render texture that the main camera projects to. And this render texture is 320 by 240, just so that when we play the game, even if we have a resolution like 1920 by 1080, if you zoom in, the pixels all match up perfectly. So that's the reason why there's two cameras. Um, and you're gonna wanna make sure that if you change the resolution to like widescreen, then the screen might tear like that or might get screwed up. So you just want to hit this button, apply to main camera, and that'll make sure that it goes normal. I'm just gonna go back to 1920 by 1080 and cool. Okay, so we're going to want to apply the camera behavior to the main camera so there it is so um let's have a public transform target and in public or private void late update we're gonna say transform dot position equals target dot position and we're just not going to have any smoothing in the beginning just to see if it works right. So there it is. Um, now, if we add camera target to the transform and we play the game. All right, you'll see that this is an issue that happens because um, basically the camera, as I was saying before, the camera gets moved kind of just into the plane of the sprites. So we want the camera to be a little bit behind. So what we're gonna do is at the end of late update, we're gonna say transform.position.z equals negative 10 F. Um, I'll just add vector three dot forward times negative 10 F. Now you'll see that that's how the camera works. And it's really jumpy and there's no smoothing, so it's looking pretty awful right now. 
So we're going to have to fix that by adding some smoothing. And for this, we're going to use a smooth damp. So we're going to create a private vector three called velocity. And we're going to have a public float time to damp. Or I'll just call it damping time. All right. So instead of just setting it to the target position, what we're going to do is we're going to say transform oops, transform dot position equals vector three dot smooth damp transform dot position target dot position ref velocity damping time and we're going to set damping time to a default of one. So let's see how this works. Okay, so the camera is damping and moving close and smoothing off to the target. So it may seem like it's all fine and dandy, but you'll notice that if we stay still, then there's a little bit of jitter on quote whenever the camera gets closer and closer to the target. It's like he's just bouncing in place over the ground, which is really weird. Now, the reason for that is because the camera has a decimal position and quote also has a decimal position. So that results in some screw ups when the camera is moving in really small increments. So what we want to do is we want to have a public float PPU for pixels per unit. I will set 16 F. And basically what we want to do is we want to use a proxy and then round it out at the end. We want to use a proxy position and then round out that proxy position at the end. So we're going to say private vector three proxy position. So instead of using transform dot position, we'll say proxy dot position and then alert that to the target position. And then for the transform dot position, we're going to use transform dot position equals new vector three math f dot round proxy position dot x times ppu divided by ppu math f dot round proxy position dot y times ppu divided by ppu and then negative 10. And we can take out this last part since we just do it in there. So now the reason this works is basically it PPU is the pixels per unit, right? Pixels per unit. So since it's defined to be 16, so that means that for every unit in uh, unity space, which is like one of these grid boxes, there's 16 pixels. And, you know, if we counted it out, then that's what you would get, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Oh, I must have missed the first one. And 16. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, each of these units are 16 pixels wide. So what it's doing is it's going to multiply that decimal position Say we have a position like 14.84, whatever, you know? Um, let me pull up a calculator just to show this better. So what it's what's gonna happen is it's gonna take this number, right? It's gonna multiply it by 16, all right? It's gonna give us something like that. It's gonna round that. So 236.67, it's gonna give us 237. And that's going to divide that by 16, 14.8125. And that 8125 is a clean number because although it may not look like it, it divides into the pixels perfectly. Like that's, that is a, um, I think that is uh, 9 sixteenths if I, 9 divided by 16th. Oh. Should have done my math wrong. 
but it, it does divide into sixteenths properly. So um, that way it'll give us a perfect pixel position. And we don't have to worry about this for the player, we just have to worry about this for the camera. Because as long as one of those entities is perfect, then you'll see that it works fine. So now you can see that quote, even though he moves around, there's no jitter. And his feet are firmly planted wherever he is. So yeah, that's how the camera is going to work in Cave Story. And our camera is working great. Um, thanks for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, share the video. Um, and next time we're probably going to work on mapping. I'm not sure though. Anyway, thanks for watching the video and I hope to see you guys next time. See ya.